With over 800 exhibitors gathering in Las Vegas, Nevada, NBAA Base is North America's largest gathering for the business aviation industry. After being forced to cancel the event in 2020, NBAA 21 will simply not disappoint. With unprecedented demand for private aircraft coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, the world's most advanced business aircraft are here on display. Suppliers up and down the supply chain are represented here at this event and come together with private, corporate, and commercial business aviation operators from across the industry, all ready to meet face-to-face -face once again and collaborate in advancing the business aviation industry. We are so excited to introduce you to Mike Stolzfus from NextGen Aviation. David and I have really enjoyed getting to know him today. And if you are not familiar with what NextGen is, essentially it's exactly what the name says. You are attracting younger pilots, aviation enthusiasts, and more. So why don't you walk us through exactly what your goal, what your mission is? NextGen Aviators was created first to inspire young people. Uh, and so in the hopes that through a aviation related experience, they would be connected to who they have been created to be. This is so cool. And you have two kids of your own. How interested are they in very, what you have going on? Very interested. So my eldest, Gabriel, 15, mm -hmm. uh, he will solo next summer. Wow. And he has been, he's, uh, he's very wise. And so he's been one whom I have talked with uh, from the beginning. And then Lucas, my 12-year-old, uh, he is—he loves next gen. Mm -hmm. It's so cool that you're introducing the next generation of flyers to the industry. Um, tell us how that works. What do parents need to know if they have a child at home that might be interested in something like this? So we work with schools and the schools then bring out an entire grade. So it could be a sixth grade of, of a school system, uh, say from a county or from a city, sixth grade, eighth grade, 10th grade. And so it's primary, that's the way that we get them there. Uh, we then include parents through uh, much of, they're very excited about their child having the opportunity, but we then also connect with them after uh, their kids have gone through the experience. Now, David, you've referred to this kind of experience. Once you get a taste of it, you've been bitten. You got the bug. You got to keep going with it. Yeah, absolutely. Once you get into aviation and it's something that you enjoy, you'll never get away from it. It, it, it is really, it, it's a great experience. It, it's, it's really cool. Like part of what you guys do, you do aircraft modification, system integration, completion work. And well, that's what we do in helicopters. And, and it's so cool to take an aircraft of any sort and kind of start with a blank canvas and turn that into something that's purpose-built um, for an end-use end use customer and watch it fly away and go to work. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. So I have a question for you. So how, tell us how NextGen started, the, the company, mm -hmm. and how did you get to the point where you felt the need to start bringing school-aged children in to start them on this path? Yep. So uh, we are Dynamic Aviation, it's the company that we own, and I'm third generation aviation, second generation leading uh, our company. And we have about 600 staff, and in that we have uh, both 150 pilots and 300 mechanics. And so our experience has been, most recently, the last five, six years, that the, when you hear folks talk about this technical workforce problem within the industry, it's real. We've experienced this ourselves. And so through a whole series of steps, uh, we said, first of all, we said, what can we do to help solve the problem for ourselves? But then via the encouragement of a number of friends, we said, no, it must be much bigger than this. So how can we help solve the technical workforce problem and the pilots as well mm -hmm. uh, for the industry? Very cool. Well, um, I'd be interested to know, um, since you're working with such young children, teens in that age, uh, we're seeing technology right now evolve so quickly. We've learned a lot throughout NBAA about sustainability, about autonomous uh, aviation. So how do you think this world that these kids are learning about now is going to change by the time they're adults? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so first, the probability of, I would say in my lifetime at least, the probability of having no one in the front of an airplane, no pilots in the front of the airplane, you'll hear the arguments across the spectrum. Uh, I think for a handful of reasons, I think the probability is somewhat low. So therefore, we will have pilot needs ongoing. 
Uh, the second is with regards to what we don't know is how a technology is going to unfold and with regards then to the technicians that we need to whether it's IT related or whether it's techno te te technology in the airplane related, whether it's the uh, materials that are used to build the airplane or to build the, the various types of UAVs. And uh, so what our interest is, is to connect to young people to the degree that they want to work with their hands or that they want to be operating equipment. We want to help spark that interest through the next gen aviator experience. That's, that's amazing because, like you said, the, the technology shortage is very real. Yep. Um, we, you know, we've been in a, a, a pretty steady growth pattern, and even through COVID, we didn't slow down at all. And that's becoming more and more of an issue as we grow. It's harder and harder to find enough technicians to keep up with the work that's coming in the hangar. Right. Um, we haven't gone back to that that uh, I guess that far back. We're we're dealing with A and P schools and some of the high schools. But what you guys are doing is starting kids really early. Um, how many years have you been uh, involved with it, or how many years have you had this program bringing school age kids yep. in? So it's new, uh, and it's uh, we started it about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, and again, it's it's related to directly related to our own, uh, you could say it, our own business woes of not being able to find enough mechanics mm -hmm. essentially to meet our schedules. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, of the tenth graders, for example, they're the furthest along, the most likely to be able to join the workforce the soonest. How many of those 10th graders have you seen that have come back and not just a little bit of interest, but really think they're probably going to come into our industry? Yeah. So the data that we have right now, and it's very early, we've only had about 1,000 kids go through. The data that we have right now is that it's on the order of 15% of the kids express an interest in being involved in aviation. Mm -hmm. We do not have it parsed out yet. Uh, between whether they have interest in being in flight or whether they have interest in being, in being technical. Okay. I think those numbers are slightly skewed. I think we'll find that it's something on the order of 10%. But if we, as a industry, if we're able to connect to a broad swath of 6th, 8th, and 10th graders, particularly 10th graders in this case, and to your question, uh, and if we're able to get 10% of those like really connected to and dreaming of being in aviation, sure. mm -hmm. then we're going to be fine. Yeah, that would be amazing. I think it's really cool what you're doing, not only for the future of aviation, but for our community as a whole. After a period, you know, throughout the pandemic, people felt so disconnected. Yeah. You're getting kids excited about something again. You're bringing them together to learn and interact with others. That, I imagine, probably feels pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> no, it's you should see this. And really, you, you guys should see this. So to see, so we have various stations. We have a, a, a AutoCAD station. We have a, a CNC machine station. We have oh, a, cool. a, a place where they build an airplane. They build a little flyer. And you see them bend the metal and you see them pop really? rivets. And then we have an electrical station where they, where they study a schematic and they then do wiring and then they turn the lights on. And like you should that's see so them cool. light up. Like oh when the God. lights light up, you should see the kids light up. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's just the technical side. Yeah. Uh, to see them get out of a King Air after they've gone for a flight <laughs> is uh, they basically hop out. Yeah. Because they, they hop and skip. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that part of it, the, 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 the kind of the knowledge, and we really, the way we think about this is one kid at a time. It's not like big numbers, ultimately mm -hmm. big numbers, but that's not the point. The point yeah. is one kid at a time. And it's, it is incredible to observe the joy that uh, they experienced through this experience. Yeah, how amazing. And then do you ever think back to when you were a kid? Yeah. I mean, you said aviation's been in your family yeah. for a long time. What's it like to kind of relive that boyhood experience? So I grew up in, a, in an aviation family, but I did not think I would get involved in aviation. Yeah. And so when I was 16, uh, I was we were out on a job with DC-3s, and uh, I, one of our pilots suggested to my uncle that he should take me flying in a DC-3. My nice first uncle was in the left seat, <laughs> my uncle was in the left seat, my cousin was in the right seat, and I'm in the jump seat. And we go out and we're spraying gypsy mold, 75, like in the DC-3 over there, uh -huh. 75 feet above the trees, spraying a pesticide. Wow. I got hooked. Oh my God. I mean, I got hooked. And it was, sure. a, it was absolutely a defining moment for my life. I could not imagine what my life would be like without aviation. Wow. And up until the time I was 16, I just assumed it wouldn't happen. Uh -huh. Wow. That's cool. And that's an amazing first experience. What, a, what an awesome aircraft to be your first oh, flight. No, this, yeah. Yeah. I but fell I'm, in love with the DC-3 that day. Oh yeah, I think they're amazing. Now I have a question. What have you noticed in your existing workforce um, is this giving them, I guess, renewed interest and kind of uh, sparking their dedication and their 
uh, loyalty to the company? Yeah, so yes is the answer. I mean, yes is the short answer, but the uh, we've had a number of folks in our technical operations that then are in the stations teaching the kids these these very stations. And uh, what it does is it brings life to everyone. Yeah. Uh, it brings life to our folks, it brings life to the kids, and they're able to share. We have some folks at Dynamic who had a similar experience when they're in high school. And yeah. so now they're, uh -huh. and they've, they've spent their life, they're in their 50s, yeah. spent their life in aviation. And so now they're able to give back. Nice. That's that is cool. amazing. Well, I'm not in 10th grade, but I'm <laughs> super excited. I wish I could go through that program. Mike, thank you so thank much you. for yes, your thank time you. today. Thank Before you. we say goodbye, anything else that you want to add? No, I'm delighted that you guys are doing what you're doing. And just please keep up the great work of uh, kind of sharing with the world what this phenomenal industry is all about. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. It's great to be back face-to-face -face in the business aviation industry. On behalf of the crew of Straight and Level, a special thanks to all of our guests for joining us live on the broadcast set in the MBAA static display. I'm Halsey Smith, and until next time, blue skies. Woo!